this week I've come to the hills above Grasmere in the Central Lake District and I'm going to try my hand at a bit of mountain photography. So before we start, I want to answer the question, what is a mountain? Now that's actually quite difficult. I did a bit of research before I came out and did this video, and there's lots of conflicting information, and I don't think anybody can really agree. So for the purposes of this video, I am defining a mountain as a natural elevation with a prominent summit that's at an altitude of greater than 2,000 feet. And if we use that definition, there are about 127 mountains inside the boundaries of the Lake District National Park. So I don't actually know a great deal about mountain photography, but I know a man that does. James Burns, how's it going, James? I'm not so bad. Good. All, Chris. I haven't seen you since end of January. End of January, Chris, from a very cold and blustery film here. It was bitter that oh, day. Absolutely, like it wrapped up that day. And where are we today? So today we're on Helm Crag, which uh -huh. is in the central Lake District, uh -huh. just above Grasmere. Uh -huh. yep. And how high is Helm Crag? Uh, 1,328 feet, Chris. So, by my definition of a mountain, in yeah. itself, it's, it's not a it's mountain. It's not a mountain. But is that right. our kind of first top tip for mountain photography? Indeed. So, we, you know, when we're, when we're photographing mountains, we, we, we want to be on the mountain next to what we're photographing. Absolutely. Yeah, I often find that you get the best images if you're on the lower fells, uh, shooting up towards the mountains. Uh -huh. Uh, and the beauty with this lower sort of fell is it's, it's easily, in, easily in reach as well. Yep, brilliant. Uh, so that's a James Burns top tip for you. Tip number one. James, if we've made the effort to climb up to the top of a mountain, and although Helm Crag's quite low, still pretty steep in places. It's quite testing, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess now that we're up here, we've got some beautiful views out over Grasmere, so I guess we're going to crack out the wide-angle lens and go for a nice big wide-angle shot. Not at all, Chris, not at all. I find my best images are often a result of zooming in, uh -huh. um, taking away the distractions, which you commonly find as um, as a result of using a wide angle lens. Oh, okay, so go for some more intimate composition. Intimate and simplifying Simpl the composition well, as well. I do love a simple composition. <laughs> you do indeed, yeah. So um, I might be all right at this. I think you should. So James, we are in the right location. Yep. We are now going to start looking for the right sort of compositions. We're going to go a lot more intimate. Yes. So what is your go-to lens for mountain photography? Okay, Chris, so uh, mine is the Canon 70-200 f4L. Uh-huh, that's the f4, not the 2.8. Not the 2.8, uh, purely because the 2.8 has image stabilisation, and that weighs a lot more. And another important tip for mountain photography is to keep weight at a minimum. So earlier when we were just climbing up, I did pick up your rucksack and it weighs an it's absolute ton. ton. Yeah. Um, so yeah, trying to keep a few of your lenses a bit lighter is probably going to help. Yeah. So that's the Canon 70 to 200 mil F4L. F4L indeed, yeah. So James, if we are breaking out telephoto lenses today, what settings do you recommend for mountain photography? Aperture wise, Chris, anything from f5.6 to f8. And f8 is the sweet spot for that lens, isn't it? Yes, it is, to maximise sharpness. And um, those lenses are pretty sharp, aren't they? Pin sharp, yeah, absolutely pin sharp, yeah. And you, do you always shoot in manual? 
I wouldn't say always shooting manual, Chris. I often shoot uh, handheld, so I uh, switch it over to aperture priority uh -huh. if you're a Canon user, of yeah. course. Shutter speed as well, I ensure it's at least the equivalent or greater of the focal length uh -huh. to avoid camera shake. Uh -huh. so, okay, fantastic. So I'm just looking around and I can start to see some, some quite nice light on the fells. Absolutely, yeah. So I think it's probably time for us to uh, get cracking. Indeed it is. Let's do that. James is seeing compositions everywhere. He's, he's already taken a couple of shots and, and I'm just not seeing what he sees. Uh, I can see two compositions here. Um, one which is the what looks like the summit from Grass with the Lion and the Lamb. And then behind you've got the um, Howitzer, which is the true summit. But that's not what we're here to photograph today. So after a bit of searching, I think I finally found a shot. I'm looking north up towards Keswick uh, and there's a V, there's a valley, and you can see through to Blencathra. So I've just been waiting for a little bit of light to land on that scene um, and I'm just not getting anything. There's a little bit of light in the far distance on Blencathra, but I don't think it's enough. So I think this shot might be one to come back to another day if I get home and look at the Lightroom and it looks okay. There is a little bit of light behind me, so I might give that a go, but and we might just cut my losses and head back over the other side of that ridge. So I continue to persevere with this shot. I'm not giving up. I am starting to get even more light on now. Um, and so what I've done is, to reflect that is I've pulled right back to 70 mil uh, to include as much of the hills on the right hand side as I possibly can. So I finished shooting Blencathra uh, and I thought I'd come and find something else. And as I did, I caught up with James and he took, uh, he showed me a shot that he'd taken. And it's just of a tree that he's picked out in the distance. And it had some light on it um, and a nice dark background. And it was, a, it was a lovely, simple shot. And I said to him, I just wouldn't have seen that shot. Um, you know, James is seeing compositions everywhere he looks, and I'm just not seeing it, seeing it. I thought this was going to be easy. I thought I was just going to turn up, get out the big lens, and pick out a few intimate compositions, and then go home. But I could not have been more wrong, and I have a newfound respect for James and, you know, the quality of his photography. Okay, Chris, how do you think you got on today, then? Uh, I, I don't think there's any point pretending that that was anything other than a struggle for me. Okay. Um, I found it very, very difficult to find compositions. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in, in some ways that's quite deflating, and in other ways it's quite exhilarating. So it's deflating because perhaps I'm not as good a photographer as I thought I was, um, which is hard to take. Um, but also, you know, it's exhilarating because now I have a new photographic challenge to overcome. Okay. The main part, mm -hmm. and really important, is to enjoy it. You have to so, enjoy what you're doing. I've had an absolutely fantastic time. I mean, I've loved it. And this place is amazing. It is awesome. Here. Absolutely awesome. Uh, Helmcrag, it's beautiful. I yeah. mean, I've been up here loads of times, but I've never really looked Yeah, the light is beautiful it. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, overall... Chris, my top tip is keep at it, mate. Just I will. keep at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah? I will. You've yeah. got a good eye. You've shown that you've got a, you've got a good eye. Yep. Carry on doing what you're doing. We'll do. So we're gonna we're gonna go now. That's it. We're for gonna us. head off. But before we do go, there is one thing that we want to do, isn't there? There is indeed. 
Yeah. Uh, when we started talking about this video and yep. doing this video, um, we both agreed that we wanted to give a shout out for a certain vlogger. For a certain vlogger. Uh, now, this vlogger is somebody that you introduced me to. Yeah, I did. Um, that you've been watching for a while. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to show a little clip um, now. Um, and this is a clip of a photographer on top of a mountain photographing an amazing sunrise with a cloud inversion. Um, and so without further ado, James, I'm going to allow you to introduce him. So tell everybody who he is. Okay, so this vlogger is one of my favourites and I introduced to Chris and his name is Odvorn Ostevik. Excuse me, Odvorn, if you got that wrong, but you are brilliant. And here we go. When I was down by the car and I couldn't see a thing. I was completely in the fog. I didn't know the way up here, but I remained optimistic and I gave it a go and I made it to the top. And what awaited me was above anything I had pre-visioned in my head. I love the fog just laying over the land with a beautiful sunrise behind me. This is fantastic. I'm gonna enjoy a cup of coffee now and have my breakfast or my second breakfast. So I jumped ahead a bit and I set up and it's looking really, really good. I love the subtle color in it and I love the fog and I love the little two peaks and the beautiful ridge in the background with the, with the morning colors of the rising sun. So once again, I'm at F11, but given amount of light now I'm able to bump it up to 160th of a second ISO 200 and I'm using a shutter delay of four seconds but this looks beautiful 